All right, in our second episode from Chapter 2D on chemical reactions and enzymes, we're going to focus specifically on the enzymes. All right? This is still going to be kind of a short screencast. I mean, all of these in this Chapter 2D series are going to be pretty short. But this one's really, really important. I want to make sure that you'll go back and review this one this week because you do have your celebration of knowledge this coming Friday. So you want to make sure that you get this one reviewed a couple of times because we're really going to hit how an enzyme does what it does. Okay? So first off, what the heck is an enzyme? An enzyme is a protein that speeds up the chemical reaction by lowering the energy of activation. And as you can see here on the screen, this is symbolized by E sub A. Right? So that stands for energy of activation. This is the amount of energy that is going to get the chemical reaction going. It's that little push that gets the sled moving down the hill or gets the skate, skateboard moving down the hill. Okay? Now enzymes are also what we call a catalyst. Catalysts are chemicals that will speed up the chemical reaction, but they're not used up. So in other words, they're neither a reactant or a product. They're not really part of the chemical reaction itself. They just make it happen a little bit faster because it takes a lot less energy to make it go. Okay, now enzymes are extremely specific. One enzyme per reaction. So if you have an enzyme where you need to break down a protein, there's one specific enzyme to fit that one polypeptide. Right? If you need a, an enzyme that's going to build a carbohydrate, there's one specific enzyme that's going to build sucrose, you know, where you're putting fructose and glucose together. Right? Now, all enzymes are going to end with an ASE. Do not get this confused with carbohydrates. Most sugars are going to end with O-S-E. Enzymes end with A-S-E. So it's going to be easy for you to get those two confused, but the A is for an enzyme. All right, I want you to focus on this graph right over here. Okay, as you can see here in red... This is the chemical equation, or, or uh, this is the graph for the speed of the reaction. So we're just like we've seen before on the previous screencast, the y-axis is energy, and over here, we simply have time. Okay, so this would be like course of reaction. Oops, there we go, let's get that. Aha, there we go. All right, so the reactants are over here, the products are here. Now, if you can basically, if you can remember from the previous screencast, the products are below the reactants. So this is a exergonic reaction because energy is being released. In red, it takes this amount of energy from here to there, right over here. That's the, inter that's the activation energy, E sub A, without the enzyme. That's a lot of energy. In other words, you got to push this thing way up the hill before it's going to fall down. All right? That's a lot of effort. This is probably not going to happen unless we can lower that threshold. That's too far to push. So if we throw an enzyme in here, now the energy of activation, or E sub A, is much, much lower. So you only need to push it about a third up the hill, and down it goes. All right? That's going to allow this chemical reaction to happen much, much faster. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of times faster. Uh, so fast that it's just not going to happen unless we can do it without an enzyme. All right? Okay, let's brush that away. Move on to the next screen. All right, the lock and key model of how enzymes function. Now, enzymes don't necessarily work like this perfectly, but this is a model. This is really, really close. So this is a good basic way to learn how an enzyme works. Okay. We've got some important uh, vocab words, and these are ones in color. We have the substrate. A substrate is a reactant. So remember, that's anything that's to the left of an arrow in a chemical equation. We have an active site. The active site is the place on the enzyme where the work is going to occur. Okay? The shape of the enzyme, or sorry, the shape of the active site is really, really important because it's very specific. 
If the substrate does not fit in the active site, nothing's going to happen. So if you remember when we talked about proteins and nucleic acids in the previous series of screencasts, uh, I really stress that a protein's function is determined by its shape. And we talked about the levels of organization, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So if you do not remember what those uh, words mean, make sure you go back to the previous section of screencast, uh, chapter 2C, and review protein structure. Because that shape really determines what it works. And that's more true in an enzyme than in any place else because that active site has to have the perfect shape. You know, you cannot put a round peg in a square hole and vice versa. The shapes have to match. Okay. The third key vocabulary word is the en enzyme substrate complex. This is a very short-lasting thing, but it's when the enzyme has the substrate in the active site, and it's the time where the actual work happens. All right. I want you to focus on this uh, picture here to the left. Uh, you may actually even have this picture in your textbook or something very, very close to it. All right. This is your substrate, and in this case, this one is sucrose. There's glucose right there, and there's fructose, and it's held together by a bond that was made through dehydration synthesis. So what we're going to do in this picture is we're going to do hydrolysis. I'm going to write hydrolysis. Okay, sorry for the scribble here. Okay, so this is hydrolysis. We're going to break sucrose into its two monomers. Well, the first thing that has to happen is this enzyme right here, it has an active site that perfectly fits sucrose. So sucrose is going to fit into this uh, enzyme right here at the enzyme substrate complex. It's going to temporarily hold it, and once the enzyme has something in its active site, it's going to bend just a little bit. And when it bends that, it's going to break that bond right there. And since the enzyme is a catalyst, it will not be used up by the chemical reaction. It's going to spit out the two monomers. And as you can see here, it is spitting out glucose and fructose. And that enzyme can go back and do this again. It can do this as many times as it needs to, as long as there's enough substrate involved. This is a really, really simple concept. Think of the substrate as like a key. Think of the enzyme as like the lock. The key will fit into the lock. And the keys are very specific. Your key will not fit any random door. It only fits a specific door. So this substrate is specific to the active site that's on this enzyme. Okay. If you have any questions over this concept, do not hesitate to talk to myself if you're in my class or your own teacher if you're watching this on YouTube. This lock and key model is really simple and really important for understanding how an enzyme does what it does. Okay, We're going to stop this second episode from this series right here. In our next episode, we're going to talk about how do I turn on an enzyme and how do I turn it off. So in other words, how do I control it? Okay, uh, This is probably the number one uh, episode in this series. Make sure you watch this one over again before your test or quiz. Okay, until next episode, we'll catch you later.